Welcome back. Last time we began learning about pitch and one way that we notate it on the page. We learned to locate C's all over the piano, and we discovered how to play the C major five-finger pattern. We even started to learn an etude in C major. Hopefully, you have been able to practice each of these things, and you are getting more comfortable with the right-hand-only version of the Ode to Joy. Let's begin by playing our C major five-finger pattern. Be sure that you're sitting comfortably at your keyboard and get both hands set up. Take a deep breath to ensure that you are relaxed and ready to go. But let's play the finger pattern with the right hand alone first. One, two, and play. Now, keep both hands in place, but let's try the left hand only this time. One, two, left hand. Were you able to try it with both hands together during your practice? Even if you didn't, let's try it now. If you get off track, just keep one hand playing, and we'll repeat the entire pattern. One, two, both hands. that one more time. I'm going to include some background accompaniment this time to make it a little more interesting for you. We'll listen for two measures of quarter note count in before we play, and it's going to be a little bit faster, so feel free to play just one hand. We'll play the entire pattern twice. One, two, here we go. time we looked at the notation. Here it is again. Repetition is a very common feature in music, so we have a symbol called a repeat sign that we can place on the score to indicate a repeat. You'll see it at the end of the third measure. It has two vertical lines with two dots in front of it. Normally, when we see two lines at the end of a measure, this is an indication that we are at the end of a piece of music. If the two dots are placed in front of the two lines, we know that we have to repeat the music that came before. My saying for remembering this is, two dots and two lines means play it two times. So let's play our finger pattern one last time, looking at the notation. Remember, we'll take the repeat. One, two, play now. You'll notice that when we play with both hands, the left hand notes are placed right below the right hand notes on the score, and the bar lines encompass both the right and the left hand notes. As we scan or look at the music from left to right, we can see that there is a right hand and a left hand note that should be played at the same time. Let's try the C major five finger pattern with both hands one last time, and do try to keep your eyes on the score this time so that you can start seeing how the notation for both hands looks. We won't use the accompaniment this time, and I'll go a little slower. One, two, here we go. continue to use this finger pattern as your warm-up when you sit down to play. Next, let's review our etude in C major. Please play it with me right now. One, two, three, ready, play. Let's 
let's play it one more time so that you can fix any errors that may have occurred. One, two, three, here we go. Let me play it for you once again, and I'd like you to listen to the sound as I play. Did you notice that I began by playing fairly loudly or strongly, and then got softer when my left hand came in? We call these changes in the intensity of the sound in music dynamics. So now, try to play the right hand strongly with me. The key is to use your arm weight and to stay relaxed in the shoulder and the forearm. Use your wrist as a shock absorber. It's okay if the notes are not connected at this point, and you may find it helpful to even bounce a little as you play. Maintaining flexibility in the wrist will ensure that you stay relaxed and create a nice tone. Are you ready for the right hand? Here are the first eight measures. One, two, three, ready, play. that feel to play loudly. In music, we use a lot of Italian terms to describe our concepts, so you'll be learning both the musical and the Italian language as we go through this course. The Italian term for loud or strong is forte, and the notation for this is a lowercase f. Your Lesson 3 materials in your music book have the etude in C with the dynamics indicated below the pitches. Remember to play forte by keeping your arm and fingers relaxed. Just use your arm weight. Let's play measures one through eight at a forte dynamic level one more time so you can think about how your arm and wrist feel. One, two, three, ready, play. Now, the Italian word for soft is piano, and we notate it with a lowercase p on the music. Let's try measures 9 through 12 only with the left hand. Remember to play piano or softly. Measure 9, here we go. Were you able to stay relaxed as you played quietly? The biggest difference between forte and piano is that we won't use as much arm weight when we play softly. In measure 13, you'll see that the left hand will switch from piano to forte. Please try to be aware of playing the dynamics that are indicated in the music, since being able to play various dynamics is a key feature of playing the piano well. We'll learn more about this in lesson 23. But when the piano was invented by a man named Bartolomeo Cristofori at the turn of the 17th century, what distinguished it from its precursors, the harpsichord and the clavichord, was the fact that one could play both soft and loud, or piano and forte. In fact, the entire name of our modern instrument is the pianoforte. We just shorten it to piano. Another important feature of this instrument is that we can play both melody, or the most important notes, say the tune that you would sing or hum, and harmony, or the accompanying notes, at the same time. Think about it. 
A clarinet clarinetist can only play one note at a time. But because we can play many notes at the same time on the piano, we can accompany our own, our own melodies. Exploring harmony will eventually allow us to learn more complicated accompaniments as the course continues. But today, we'll start with the two most basic building blocks of harmony. The terms that we use for these building blocks are tonic and dominant. Tonic refers to the first note of the scale being played. In fact, we call each note a scale degree, so most often we say that the tonic is the first scale degree. If we look at the C major five-finger pattern that we've been playing, C is the lowest note, or the first note, or the first scale degree, so it's the tonic note. As an aside, for now, I've chosen a scale where we only use the white keys, We'll delve into how the black keys become incorporated next time. Dominant refers to the fifth scale degree. So if we count up from C, remember to count C because it's scale degree one, one, two, three, four, five, we arrive at G as the dominant note of the pattern or scale. Because we often play the melody with the right hand and the harmony with the left hand, Let's practice playing tonic and dominant notes with the left hand right now. Let's set up our left hand over the notes of the C major five-finger pattern. Remember that the tonic is the first scale degree, or the lowest note, so it will be played with finger five in the left hand. And the dominant will be played with the thumb, or finger number one. So the tonic and dominant notes don't match the finger numbers in this case. You'll see in the notation that we begin with the tonic note, or the C. Let's play this right now. One, two, and play. C, two, three, four. G, two. An important system that musicians employ to indicate harmony in music uses Roman numerals. So in a major key, we use a capital Roman numeral 1 for tonic, and we place it below the staff like this. And we use an uppercase Roman numeral 5 to indicate a dominant harmony. We'll see later on how using Roman numerals can be really helpful when we move around the piano and play in different keys. You'll find a copy of the tonic and dominant exercise that we just played with the Roman numerals indicated or included with your Lesson 3 materials. Now, however, I'd like to have you improvise a melody over the tonic and dominant notes in C major. You'll find the left-hand notes for this improvisation also with your Lesson 3 materials. We'll plan on playing 16 measures with 4 beats per measure. You can keep your right hand in the C major five-finger pattern, and you'll see that I've provided a possible right-hand rhythm for you. If you begin and end on C, your melody will sound more pleasing. Right now, I'll play the left-hand harmony notes and the background accompaniment track while you try out some possible right-hand melodies. Get your right hand over the C major five-finger pattern. And you're on your own for the melody. Here we go. One, two, and play. Did you hear a melody that you liked as you played? Perhaps you noticed only snippets of the melody that you liked. If so, try to remember those so that you can use them later on. 
You could even write down the melody notes that you prefer on your score as you practice after our lesson. Remember, at first, keep your melody simple. Simplicity is often best. And feel free to try it out with the accompaniment between the lessons. Here's how I might improvise a melody over this harmony. You can just listen. Next, I'd like to review the right-hand-only version of the Ode to Joy that I introduced at the end of Lesson 2. Please get your right hand in place and be sure that you start with finger 3 on the E. You'll see that your right hand is in a C major 5-finger pattern here, but we begin with finger 3. Here we go. One, two, and play. Try that one more time. One, two, and play. If you need a moment to review the right-hand melody, please pause the video and practice it a few more times. You'll need to be able to play it for the next piece. Now, I'd like to harmonize our Ode to Joy and see how it will sound with tonic and dominant notes. If you refer to the Ode to Joy with your Lesson 3 materials, you'll see that we now have a left-hand part with the tonic and dominant notes, and the Roman numerals are written on the score. You can refer to either the notes or the Roman numerals as you play. How about if I play it for you first so you can hear how it will sound? Feel free to follow along on the score or watch my hands. Did you hear and see how the left hand made a quick change, using half notes, from dominant to tonic harmony at the end? Did you also notice that even though the right hand melody is now notated on the top line, it's exactly the same as what we just played? I'd like to play the left hand alone one time. Please place finger 5 of the left hand over C and the thumb over G. Here we go. One, two, left hand. C, two, three, four. Two, three, four. Try to play both hands together. We'll go a little slower since there is more to coordinate. Get both hands in place. One, two, and play. So how did you do? I'll bet that you made a mistake or two along the way. 
So if it helps to break this down and just play the left hand alone, then that would be a good practice step to take after our lesson today. Before our next lesson, I would like you to practice this with both hands. I'd like to remind you that if you make a mistake during our lessons or when you're playing with the accompaniment tracks, don't try to go back and correct it. Instead, try to look ahead and jump back in, though that takes practice too. Just be patient and remember that playing and reading music hands together is more challenging than it looks or sounds. So the last piece that I'd like to look at today is the right hand of the melodic tune by Louis Kohler. Kohler was a German composer and piano teacher who was born in 1820 and died in 1886. This is a piece that he wrote for his students, and I've adapted it for this course. I hope that you'll enjoy the melody. Let's preview the score together. I'd like to highlight key points in the first eight measures and work through our practice steps. First, notice that at the beginning, the time signature shows 3-4. The 4 at the bottom is how we indicate that the quarter note gets one beat. So there will be the equivalent of three quarter note beats in each measure. Let's learn the first eight measures together using the three practice steps that we used to learn our etude last time. Clap, shadow, and play. How about if we clap the rhythm together for the first eight measures? Notice that we begin with a half note, which is followed by four quarter notes. In measures three, four, seven, and eight, we have dotted half notes that we'll need to hold for a full three beats. You may recognize the half note and quarter note rhythm in measures five and six, as this was the same rhythmic pattern that we played in the etude. So let's clap the first eight measures. One, two, clap. One, two, three. 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 One. Two, three. Now, before shadowing the right hand, let's preview the notes. You'll notice that we begin on E with finger number three. The E is repeated as a quarter note at the end of measure one and again on the downbeat of measure two. On beat two of measure two, however, we skip a note and we skip a finger and a key in our finger pattern to play the C with the thumb. On beat three of measure two, we skip back up to the E, and for the downbeat of measure three, we skip up to a G with finger number five. The way to count this G, if you're singing or thinking note names, will be G, two, three. We say G on beat one, and then say two, three on beats two and three. You'll hear me do this in a moment. In measure four, we skip back down to E, which we also hold for three beats. Now, looking ahead to the next four measures, you'll note that we begin measure five with a half note F. So you'll play finger number four. This pitch is repeated several times with the half note and quarter note rhythm in measures five and six. Then in measure seven, you step down to an E with the third finger and hold it for three beats. That E is repeated in measure eight. So let's do practice step number two and try to shadow the first eight measures together. Sit tall and ensure that you still have a good piano position. You may keep your left hand in your lap, but set your right hand up in your C position. Notice that this begins on E, which is under your third finger. As we shadow the notes on the keyboard, I'll sing the note names and count to keep us steady. Measures one through eight. One, two, shadow. E, 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 C, E, G, two, three, E, two, three. F, two, F, F, two, F, E, two, three, E, two, three. 
If you feel that you need to repeat this step for extra security, you may pause the video, then rejoin me. So now let's play the first eight measures together. One, two, play. Let's try it one more time. I know that you can catch more of the notes and rhythms this time. One, two, play. After our lesson, please continue working on these measures until you can play them with ease. Then, go ahead and learn measures 9 through 16. You'll notice that the measure numbers are indicated above the first note at the beginning of each line. I'll point out that measures 9 through 12 are just like measures 1 through 4, so once you learn the first four measures, you already have half of the piece learned. For the final four measures of the piece, be sure to follow the practice steps that we just did. Clap, shadow, and play, and repeat until you are confident that you can play these measures. Then you can link both practice sections together from the beginning. Please work on this piece for the next few days. I'll be adding some left-hand harmony at the next lesson, so if you're able to play this melody with ease before our next lesson, you'll meet with more success. I'd like you to sit back and listen as I play the entire piece for you right now. This will give you a sense of how it should sound before the next lesson. You can follow along in the score or watch my hand as I play. So today, we reviewed our C major five-finger pattern and practiced it hands together. We learned about dynamics in music, and we practiced playing forte and piano, or loud and soft. We added these dynamics to our etude in C. We also learned about tonic and dominant harmony, which we added to our Ode to Joy, and we improvised a melody over these harmony notes. Finally, we learned the melody for a new piece by Louis Kohler. I encourage you to work on all of these skills and music. In fact, before moving on to the next lesson, please practice the following. The C major five finger pattern, hands together with the repeat. I'd recommend that you be able to, first of all, play it with me on the video or with the accompaniment track. And second, that you be able to play it at a forte dynamic level and also at a piano dynamic level. Also, work out a 16-bar improvisation over the tonic and dominant left-hand notes. Remember that there is also an accompaniment track that you can play along with in your course materials. Play the Ode to Joy with both hands. You'll play the melody entirely with the right hand now, while the left hand plays tonic and dominant notes. Learn the right hand of the melodic tune by Kohler and be able to play it before our next lesson. Remember, you should feel free to review this lesson as necessary and practice playing along with me or with the accompaniments that are included in your course materials so you'll be prepared to play at the correct speed before the next lesson. Take at least a couple of days to reinforce these new concepts and the new music before joining me for Lesson 4. But feel free to take longer if needed. Many people need several days or a week before they're ready for Lesson 4. I'll look forward to seeing you next time. Until then, follow your practice steps as you work through the new music, and happy practicing!